Hey, it's Mazzy here, and I'm in a George Harrison mood because of all this uh, news about all things must pass, a reissue 50th anniversary. A link below is to my recent Mazzy's Mix number eight video. And from seven minutes, 30 seconds, starting there, I do the rant on the uh, 50th anniversary issues. It does continue to the end of that video, so please watch that. I'm a fan of those videos. Uh, I just want to show like my CD collection of George Harrison. I'm not gonna dive into deep about the music, but I'm in the mood. I love George Harrison's solo uh, solo output. Um, not everything is great. All Things Has Passed is my favorite album of all the solo Beatles. But I do, as I get into this, just two more things I thought about about this 50th anniversary. Um, and about the Uber box that people um, are, are debating good, bad, and ugly uh, in terms of uh, the price and the vastness and the scale of it. I have one more thought that I did not include in that video, and I want, I want to just, just share it here. When I was in the record business in the 70s, and this went beyond into the 80s and, be, and probably to this day, record companies and artists would do occasionally very limited special editions, pressings, uh, handmade boxes of wood and leather and binders, and sometimes make 50 copies, 100 copies, maybe 300 copies, no, no more. And they would give to the artists, they'd give to producers, they'd give to uh, record company executives, they'd give them to radio station uh, program directors and important disc jockeys, and you know, people in the retail world, maybe buyers, at uh, Tower Records and, you know, the various record chains and retail, a very limited item. That's how I look at this Uber set. Also, think about this. I think, and this is just, uh, um, just me maybe imagining this, I could totally see Olivia putting together this box, this beautiful wooden box. Obviously, the style of it, the wood in it, uh, you know, the bookmark made out of a fallen tree. I know people think this is silly, but Frere Park, Frere Park is a special place for the Harrisons, obviously, for so many reasons. Obviously, where this album was, um, you know, the cover of the album, some of the music, not all recorded there, but you know, everything kind of, this is the Frere Park time in George Harrison's life early on. And Frere Park is a very special place. I've been there at the end of this video. I'm gonna show a couple of pictures uh, of the exterior of Frere Park. And I'm gonna show a few photographs that I took of George Harrison during the 74 tour at the Cow Palace or at Open Coliseum, 1974 Dark Horse tour. So stand by for that at the end. But I was thinking about this. I totally could see Olivia originally designing this set, having it designed, she worked closely with the designers on the book projects and the whole vision of the Uber set, this beautiful large box. I could totally see her initially possibly creating this for herself, her family, and her close friends, and having this made, maybe 25, maybe 50, maybe 100 of them, giving them away to special people in her and George Harrison's life. I can totally see that. And then at some point, wh whether it's the record company or the wish of her or Danny, deciding, you know, let's offer these to people who might enjoy them as well. Now, all this bullshit going on about $1,000, these things aren't cheap. It's a limited series. They're handmade. They're put together. Um, I could totally see why, um, as it is a very expensive price, but why my guess is this was made. And my good friend, David Bacon, uh, wrote me, and he was talking about this, and he said, imagine no Uber set. Imagine if there wasn't an Uber set, if they never made an Uber set. We would never know. We would never have it. It would never be there. So since it's there, it's like a conceptual kind of uh, vicious circle thing. Since it's there, just pretend it's not there. Everything you want, maybe except these uh, books, um, you can get, and you can get for a lot less expensive. And there are sales out there, which I said in that other video ad nauseum. Um, it's kind of like, again, like the Genesis books. George Harrison was a big proponent and liked 
the idea of these limited edition books, and those were not cheap at all. But he presented, it was like an archive. The Uber is an archive, a family heirloom that they're sharing, uh, albeit, albeit um, for a lot of money. Um, but there are other options. So anyway, enough of that. Let's just go through these. In the CD world, which um, obviously I'm not against, uh, and I collect these as well, especially with the Beatles stuff, there were two box sets released uh, of the George Harrison main catalog. They're the Apple years from 1968 to 1975. Includes electronic sounds and Wonderwall and all the uh, main albums, the Apple years. And it's got a lovely, lovely little book. Cool set. I think these are out of print. This has uh, photographs or pictures from Esher, the house that uh, George Harrison owned before Fair Park. And of course, the uh, demo tapes for the White Album were recorded there. At Those were the Esher recordings outside of London. So that's the Apple years. And then somewhat later, they put out the Dark Horse years. Dark Horse Records, of course, was his custom label, initially licensed and distributed through a and Records in the States. But those were only the other artists that Harrison and Dark Horse signed. He eventually signed to Warner Brothers, switched over, and that's when he put out his first record, 33 and a third on Warner Brothers, Dark Horse Records distributed by Warner Brothers. And this is the Dark Horse years, 1976 to 1992. And uh, you get an idea of that. So these are fun. I think these are out of print, and I don't know what they go for. Another box set which I really like is uh, this called Collaborations. And this is Ravi Shankar, George Harrison, all the um, albums, the several albums that um, numbered certificate. Number of albums that George Harrison collaborated and produced with Ravi Shankar. Music Festival from India, Ravi Shankar's Music Festival from India. And this is actually, you'll see these are... Um, Here's another one. This is a Shankar Family and Friends, produced by George Harrison. These are a large, almost like a seven by seven size, but the design is interesting. If I can get it out of here. <laughs> uh, lyric book, information, production book, and everything. And um, these are inside. There's a space that the, I actually have one playing in the background. The CD fits in here. There's an oversized case, almost like enlarged uh, singles, but um, more so, but larger. Strange size, maybe? I don't know. This DVD also, and a, a lovely, um, oh, this one's great. This came out a vinyl version of Record Store Day uh, last year. This is uh, Chance of India, Ravi Shankar, beautiful record. And of course, a lovely, lovely uh, book. I'm very much into the artwork in these sets that shows the collaborations between George Harrison and Ravi Shankar. Big fan of Indian music here. So without further ado, let me just jump through these um, very fast electronic sounds. Wonderwall. Uh, the first time All Things Must Pass came out on compact discs. Concert for Bangladesh, 1971 concert, Living in Material World, <laughs> Extra Texture. What? A little out of order here. It might be out of order, so don't, you know, bust my balls. Dark Horse, 33 and a third. Self titled, uh, one of the best sounding George Harrison records. Somewhere in England, gone tropo, gone crazy, gone Hawaii. Uh, the best of the Dark Horse years, uh, the Warner Dark Horse years, obviously. The Rebirth, uh, produced by uh, Jeff Lynne, Cloud Nine, 1979, 89, 1989. Yes, I think. Uh, best of Dark Horse, uh, excuse me, the best of uh, Apple, best George Harrison. This, um, actually shows the UK cover. The American cover was terrible. Um, my problem with this was they uh, used half the record on side one of Beatles songs. 
which kind of short shifted George. I think, uh, even though they're great songs, obviously, I think he deserves something on his own uh, of his best of work, even if they weren't hits. Uh, this is a single, Cure Down. I think this was a song used in on the soundtrack of Lethal Weapon. Kind of a fun song. Uh, we got George Harrison live in um, Japan. Japan, this is the tour. He did the one tour with Eric Clapton. Uh, the final album posthumously released uh, a year after it died, Brainwashed. Danny, uh, George's son, and Jeff Lynn finished it. Some CD singles. This is Love, Any he Road, My Sweet Lord. Now this is, um, and this has My Sweet Lord, Let It Down, and My Sweet Lord 2000. This was uh, issued around the remix time. I don't like the 2000 remix of this album. I don't think it's very good, personally. Um, hopefully the new one will be better. I think it's gonna be more mature. I actually love All Things Must Pass, the original LP. Not the CD sounding as much, but the original LP 1970 sounds fantastic. Phil Spector and all. And some say, oh, George's voice is pushed back. And George, George doesn't have a strong voice anyway, so I think it really works in the mix. But um, this was a redo, reversion and everything, which is uh, okay. Obviously, uh, very ver many versions of this include a DVD. Um, the concert for George, I was fortunate enough to attend this concert. This was, uh, what, a year after uh, George passed away at the Royal Albert Hall. Fantastic. If you haven't seen this concert on DVD or Blu-ray, you got to watch it. It's, it just... It's mesmerizing, it's beautiful, it's spiritual, and it's one of the most amazing musical nights I've had in my entire life. Loved it. Um, songs by George Harrison. Um, this is um, Let It Roll, another collection. This is actually a pretty good kind of overview best of. This is probably the best of the single discs, and I quite like this one. Um, there's some things that are handmade, basically bootlegs. Deep Blue, uh, this is a bootleg. I can't remember if a friend of mine made it or where I got it. So uh, uh, this is a, the sampler, I guess, or the single disc of Early Takes Volume 1 that Olivia worked on with the book project and the Martin Scorsese uh, film documentary, which I'm a little ho-hum about. Uh, I love all the people, but I don't think it really fully... Uh, showcase the best of George Harrison. I think it was skewed in certain ways. Um, anyway, uh, this is good, but it's not enough. It should have been a double album. There's volume one, there was never a volume two, and this is over a decade ago now. Now some, uh, this is a bootleg that Mr. Bacon and I made um, ourselves, just for ourselves. It's called A Horse to Water, and it has a lot of different boots and bests of, and it's kind of our own three disc comp. David uh, Bacon did the artwork. We didn't sell this. We just did it for our own private use. Private label. George Harrison. More bootlegs. Oh, poor Little Girl. This was this is a Warner Brothers uh, single uh, CD as well. Uh, this is on that uh, Best of Dark Horse years. Uh, more bootlegs. Oh no, this is Champy Happy. George Harrison and the Rod of Christ in the Temple. The actual Radha Krishna Temple, fantastic record George produced in 1972, 71 or 72, I think it's 72. Um, the London branch of the uh, Krishnas, Radha Krishna Temple, fantastic Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Radha Radha, Hare Krishna. Um, in the first place, uh, this is from the film Wonderwall. George Harrison, bootleg, bootleg, this is a true legend. A George Harrison, like a little documentary thingy, you know, anything Beatles. <laughs> you find it, you put it out there, we buy this shit. The Making of All Things Must Pass. Now, we're hoping that some of this stuff is on the, uh, the new All Things Must Pass. There's versions here of various songs, early takes, guide vocal takes, instrumental takes. And I have a lot of this stuff. Now, I have a lot more of this kind of stuff digitally uh, in a hard drive of so many bootlegs. Beware of Apco, those kind of things. Um, 12 Arnold Grove, obviously one of his childhood homes. Uh, pirate songs, including some uh, Monty Python stuff. Uh, television appearances. Songs from the Material Worlds is a tribute to George Harrison. 
with artists like Todd Rundgren, uh, Mark Ford, Dave Davis, John Entwistle, Big Head Todd, the IP Giants, Smithereens, Leslie West, Bill Wyman, and so actually it's Jay Bennett. Jay Bennett. Um, shout out there to uh, my Jay Bennett friends. <laughs> Live in Washington, 74. I'm getting bored in this stuff. Another bootleg, whatever that is. That's I have those classes, promo classes from Warner Brothers from 33 and a third. Sometimes, you know, it's so hard you can't even read it the way they press these things. Uh, now, obviously, this stuff came out. Now, I didn't pull here the uh, recent Dylan and George Harrison uh, stuff they, they kind of did together. George is, like, barely noticeable on that. Everest. Okay, this is includes music of George Harrison. That's why they get people like me to buy this shit. Uh, this is a soundtrack to a documentary including music of George Harrison. Film scores and arrangements by Steve Wood and Daniel May. Here Comes the Sun is on here. Anyway, just for the completest, uh, this was a solo George that I combined myself when I first started burning CDs way back, way before iTunes when they had uh, whatever that program was. I can't even remember anymore. And George Harrison bonus. Uh, this is um, bootlegs, bonus tracks plus. Love the always love that picture uh, with the ukulele. And a uncut while my guitar gently weeps. These are cover songs uh, by Carl Perkins, uh, Show of Hands, Roy Orbison. Oh, it's not just it's things with George as well, or his songs covered. And influences like Elvis Presley, okay, Chuck Berry, Buddy Holly, Little Richard, the usual, George Formby, um, the usual rubbish, but it won't cost much. And then just a couple other little box sets. They started out doing a series of his records expanded. Uh, Living in Material World, Clamshell Box, which includes a CD, bonus tracks, and a DVD, some uh, sort of music video type things. Lovely little boxes. They didn't continue with these. Uh, it has a book. Inside, connected, it just falls out. And um, yes, I think the, the thing that people get pissy about, which I get, it, you know, forget the prices, let's put those aside, is when they're doing these things and they're different sizes. Like this, this is the remix, terrible in my opinion. I would, and a couple extra tracks and just not well, ill-conceived. Ill and then this is brainwashed and expanded, but look at this. like. Make them the same size, you know, people, I'm the Virgo in me wants them the same size. So, um, but Brainwashed was actually quite nice. CD, people hate that cover, I actually like it. Um, books, uh, CD, whatever, sticker, Dark Horse, sticker, a poster of the cover poster, you know, use your imagination. And, oh, I almost lost it, I almost got rid of it. Little guitar pick, how's that? George Harrison guitar pick, out of focus. Is it magnetic? No, it's plastic. Uh, thanks for watching, this is just a quick uh, overview. I love jo I love George Harrison. So, um, Mazzy loves you. <laughs>